right? Maybe you can't help them when you're in the midst of it because you're processing it. But when you get over the hill, I think it's important and I think it's vital that you reach back over the hill and help somebody that may be going through a similar situation and you can share your values and principles with them because that experience that we go through and we deal with it's not just for us. Before the sun rises is the time of least distraction. Before the sun rises where you can build intimacy and fluency with what you want to stand for in your day. Before the sun rises, the luxury and tranquility of the early morning hours, you can do that deep inner work that will allow you to go out in the world and, and play at your best. We live in a world where a lot of people are busy being busy, but what's the point of being busy around climbing the wrong Mount Everest? And so clarity is one of the DNAs of mastery. But if you look at the greatest billionaires, if you look at the greatest producers on the planet, these people have one thing in common. They are ridiculously curious. And no matter how much money they make and no matter how much impact they have, they maintain a white belt mentality. One of the keys to epic performance is a relentless commitment to daily growth. As you begin your day, so you handcraft the rest of your day. And if you have consistently great days, you're gonna have consistently great weeks, quarters, year, and a lifetime. We live in a world that suggests the doorway to success it swings outward. If you build the business, if you get the jet, if you get the money, if you get the cars, if you get the beautiful spouse, then you're gonna be happy. What I believe, and there's a model in the 5AM Club that I think is a very disruptive model, but it's a transformational model. And it's called the Four Interior Empires. And it's not just mindset, it's mindset, heart set, hell set, and soul set. But I worked on those Four Interior Empires when I was a very unhappy litigation lawyer. Like, I'd made money, I was successful, I had two law degrees, and yet I'd wake up every morning, Tom, and I'd go into the bathroom mirror and I'd look at myself and I was a completely empty person. And nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. And so what I did was I started working on myself. You know, I worked on my mindset and I read all the books and I went to the courses, but that's only your psychology. And I think that's one of the missing links in our field, which is everyone's talking about mindset. But mindset is just your belief system. It's just your psychology. It's, it's very important, but that's 25% of the personal mastery equation. I believe the second piece is your heart set. And I worked on that purifying your heart. That's your emotionality, not just your psychology. You're never gonna make history dominate your domain and handcraft a world-class life if you've got a great psychology but you're carrying the pain and sadness, disappointment and trauma of the past. So I worked on my heart set, your health set. Don't die. If you wanna change the world, like dead people don't change the world. What have you done today to be different? What have you done to step outside the conventions that you set for yourself? The conventions and the rules set by your past. Today, you have the power to move on. Today, you have the power to move away from your past and move towards a successful future. This is your decision, your call to make in your future. This is how your life can gain its own direction. And this is where your life can be so much more, so much better. You can make it better. You have always had the potential to take one more step, the potential to take the risks others are too scared to take because you are more and you are stronger and you have the determination and the courage to be so much more. Know how to be someone better, to look for something better, to become someone with the purpose, to constantly look for change, to always look for somewhere to improve, for somewhere to be better because this is where you begin. You own your success, so let it take control. Take control of your life and take control of your power. This is where the power is in your control. Get after it. You go out in the world every single morning. People might ridicule you because every genius is ridiculed before they're revered. People might throw stones at you, but you use them to build monuments of mastery. People might not understand you, 
because any disruptor is going to be misunderstood. And even if you're an army of one, a Galileo or a Steve Jobs or Phil Knight, you continue at all costs. It all starts with who you are because you'll never rise any higher than what's going on within you. What terrifies you most go directly there because discomfort is simply growth in wolf's clothing. To lead and to become a great hero or an everyday hero. The doorway is through embracing our suffering and doing difficult things. I think pleasure has been promoted too much in our society. Like no great titan of industry, no legendary cellist, no great athlete. You know, the great ones all understand that suffering is the price of greatness. So how do we become braver? You, you, you do the difficult things that you don't feel like doing, but you know have the payoff. You know, be crazy. The great leaders are insane. And I say that they're insane to the majority. The great ones are all misfits and they're all weird. I mean, the very nature of being a disruptor and a leader means you're not a follower. And if you're not a follower, then you're not buying the Kool-Aid that society sells you. If you're not a follower, you're not like this all the time looking for likes. If, if, if you're not a follower, you dress the way you want to dress. If people criticize you, you know, they criticize all the great ones. Critics are nothing more than dreamers who got scared and never got off their chairs and got back in the game. So you've got to be willing to be to 5 a.m. Weird. Who does that? Why not sleep? Leaders have to be willing not to be followers. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming people for the reasons you find yourself in now. Stop blaming your situation. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your genetic. Stop blaming your finances. Stop blaming your past. Claw yourself back into the light. Stop blaming everybody else. The only person you can truly blame is you because you are the only person who can get yourself out of it. Live life a victor, not a victim. You might even be right. You might be poor because of your parents or broken because of your relationship you were in. But what does blaming people or society do for you? It will keep you in the same hole and all you're doing is digging the hole even more. It's because your situation where you right now hasn't changed. In order to go forward and to get out of the hole is growth. Instead of bringing other people down to your level, build yourself up to them. Claw yourself out of that hole and you will get to see the sun once again. Massive success is how you prove people wrong and prove yourself right. The only way you get upstream is to swim against the current. You're permanently ruining your future. You're halting your progress. Life is made not to be easy. Not one's life is ever easy. How did you ever think you were ever going to make any progress? You can make this your time. You can take control of the life you want to live. Have the authority to know what you need to change. To know how to change and then to take action. Have discipline for yourself into progress. Switch your routine. Make your life hard. Difficult situations force you to make improvements, force you to learn, to educate yourself. Prove this to yourself. Make others jealous. Make yourself jealous. Like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart. Like you, like there's, there's things that are gonna be natural and there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. I feel like there's a shift that can make people work harder. The big one that I push is you're gonna die. Like, like if you're complaining, like to me, life is broken down into complaining and not. So if you're not complaining, 
Well, then I have no, I have no advice for you. I'm, I'm pumped. Like, you did it. We're beating ourselves up. Like, everybody sucks at something, right? Like, we all have shortcomings and we all have strengths. And for me, it's like, why don't we just audit that? Like, why don't we just look at it that way and be like, all right, well, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. Like, and then, and then, and then I only focus what I'm good at, right? Like, I don't dwell that I can't fix shit around the house. I call somebody to fix it. Don't lose yourself on the way to the top. There'll never be a better you than you. Rarely is it a question of talent or technique. It's just one of belief and the concomitant will to kind of do something that either no one's done before or even more, I think, to crack open the barriers that people consider impossible or undoable. And that kind of belief, I think, is rarer than talent. Talent is, it's around. And to have them both at those levels, there's only a few people that, that really have that, I think, in the history. They're the ones that have really changed things. When you're looking at everything, it's such a gift to be able to look at something and to love it for the sake of it. And nurturing and maintaining that is one of the hardest tests of any pro much less for anyone to find, right, what is the Beethoven who never found his piano or harpsichord or, right? There's days you want to go out, it hurts, or you're sore, or you just suck, you, you're, you're not making progress, you're ramming into the, and you feel defeated, but that's, that's the nature of love, you know? It's got hate in there, you know? It's got pain in there, and it draws you to it, that's the magnetism. I see people with talent, with all those things, but the one thing they don't have is that just love for doing it for the sake of it. And the sense of obligation to do something with what you're given, you know? There's something to that. It's important. I think getting what you want quenches the fire that got you there often. Unless it's something replaced by something more permanent, which becomes more intangible. I think the successes of winning, right? You want to be the best in the neighborhood and then win the local contest and then whatever, whatever. It's, it just keeps going up. And then by the time you get there, you can have a stadium screaming your name. It's actually happened a couple of times to me. And there is a visceral exhilaration to it. There is. I've experienced that. I know what that's like. You land a trick and there's, it just lights up. It's crazy. At the same time, it's hollow. It's hollow, that's not the thing that can drive you, at least not for long. It's being able to say, oh, I had that, I had a model, or I had people autograph, oh, whatever, all of these honors. Eventually, that stuff fades to just static, and you're left with you and your board. And if you decide that that's what you love, that's what you're doing, then your days are numbered. And so the trick is to always peel back of why am I doing this in the first place? It is easy to say, and I think it's smothering to say, and often there's a culture of saying that if, if it cannot be proven, it must not be possible. And the big takeaway from that theorem is that there's lots of things that cannot be proven, though they are correct. Because we see things so often in front of us the way that it should be done and it imposes a kind of barrier through what people know and see, a uh, familiarity. But maybe you can change something within you that can be just outside a new set of axioms, some new skill set that will take you further. And I think that that's the history of development. It's interesting how getting what you think you want can end up being the force that pushes you into, paint yourself into a corner, pushes you into a group. There's something terrible to be top of the mountain, I'm the best, I'm the king, guarding it. The Nietzsche quote, right? What's left for you when you make it to the top? But lightning, you know?
it's this admixture. It's everybody has a unique set of variables that they can put in place and express their individual identity in a form of call it greatness. That's something to be remembered. That's what you look for. So if there's anything, just find joy in what you do for the sake of it. And then recognize how you're being shaped in the process. And hopefully you become a better man through it, you know? It's not fair. It's not fair your car broke down. It's not fair your friend passed away. It's not fair you were bullied. It's not fair that your business failed. It's not fair you lost all your money and it's not fair that she left you. It's not fair because life is not fair. So now, you know it's not fair. What are you gonna do? You've already complained about it. Are you gonna keep whining? Or are you going to take accountability for it? Because what's more whining going to do? What's more complaining gonna do? It's not gonna change the fact that life can be unfair at times. So what do you need to do? You need to stop complaining, stop whining, stop playing the victim, and stop feeling sorry for yourself. And start taking control. Start being accountable. Start taking responsibility. Start changing your situation. Stop complaining about your life and start working on changing your life. Success does not come to those who complain. Success comes to those who change their circumstances when needed. You're not weak. You're power. You can change your circumstances. Circumstances don't make you. You make your circumstances. Do what you can with what you have and where you are. No one said work 20%. No one said try a little less. Wake up with your own message in your head. The message that inspires you. Inspires you to work harder. Strive for success. Stop waiting for the right time. The right time is now. Take it now. Work now. Be creative. Be strong. Be successful. What do you want to do right now? Do something meaningful. Meaningful with worth. Something that will impact your life. Impact it for the better. Make it better. You have it in you. Do what you can now. Full of ambition. Fulfill to 100%. No more than that. Break down the walls that contain you imprison you from achieving everything you have ever wanted. Surround yourself with people who lift you up, people who can see you rise. People who can see you move forward, not holding you back. People who move with you, not moving against you. Or finding friends of similar character and heart that's important to me. I strive for that. Be the person you need to become. Feel the strength you've always wanted to feel. See your courage as a superpower. A superpower to help you progress, to boost your confidence, boost your life, upgrade it to be better, more fulfilling life. One where you and only you are in control. What you do in these reflexive couplings shapes you. You shape it, it shapes you. You don't disconnect from that. You just tumble forward. Over time, you become what you do. And you find, hopefully, at the end of that process, you're not insufferable. That you actually have something to give and can be present, you know? So for all I've done, I appreciate, I don't look at it as much, but ultimately it just goes out there. It's just what you do. You just become one with that. I think that's been a key for me of why I've been able to sustain this fire that's so seemingly easily quenched. Yeah. So when I see people who have had success, 
I see boredom for the most part in them. And then I see a tombstone. And circling back to what trophies and those things represented, right? Feynman, great physicist, said that is the Nobel Prize would be the tombstone on all great work. Just look at it. I haven't done a study of Academy Awards, right? 